Hey critters, let's talk about Creality's new LDR002R or LD002R resin printer. Uh, this is a beta machine. Hey Nosy. Um, this is a beta machine, so it will probably change before final production. But here is what I've discovered so far. Yeah, he loves this tree. <laughs> he climbs all the way up to the top of this tree. <laughs> First, PPE, make sure you wear your gloves. That is critical. Two things, or three things you're going to absolutely need. Well, four, paper towels, gloves, 91% alcohol, IPA, and a bowl to work with your parts in. So, the printer. First, as you saw in my video, I love this acrylic shell. It is ridiculously durable. I mean, you knock on this. I can't do it now because I'm printing. But, um, very, very nice. Um... There is, the only problem I've encountered so far is that my first layers get squished. So here's a print and you can see, that's supposed to be round and there's like support here and that first layer got pretty squished. So it's like the first couple of millimeters of the print um, are all trying to be printed on one layer. Um, I kind of know what the problem is, I just can't find it. There's another one of these machines, it was either the Mars or the Photon that had a similar issue and people were doing something with the coupler or the stepper motor to fix it. Not sure um, on that, so I'll have to work on that. Um, but anyway, so far, no problems with the Z-axis, linear rail, lead screw, nice and stout. Um, mine actually came leveled, I never had to adjust it. Four bolts, two on each side to adjust. So you um, put it in leveling mode, loosen those bolts, it goes down, you then tighten those bolts and you're good. Um, UI is very similar to the Mars UI um, in that you have a nice menu with um, pictures that G2Box creates for the icon so you can see what it is you're going to print and you can also adjust your settings in real time so you can change um, number of bottom layers and the burn time for each etc which is really nice. Um, exposure off, I think that's when the LED is not on, I'm not sure. Uh, otherwise, very impressed. The thumb drive that it came with died almost immediately. I think I got I got to use it twice and it was dead. It doesn't work now. Even when I plug it into the PC, it doesn't work. So just a cheap drive. Um, I've suggested to them that they use a slightly better quality drive. That actually looked like a halfway decent drive. I was surprised it failed so rapidly. But I also suggested they use a short drive, even smaller than this one. Like the little SanDisk ones that I provide a link for you guys. If you look under... Um, 3D printing parts and accessories, you'll see these drives there. Not this one, this is the one that comes with all the FDM printers because that one died. I've just had this thing so busy I haven't had a chance to change it out yet. But yeah, you want the little tiny drive so you don't bump this and break it. Standard power cable in the back, um, USB port up front, it is not super recessed so it's easy to use. Uh, also very quiet. I noticed the fans hardly make any noise. If it wasn't for the fact that resin is toxic, you could use this in your bedroom. No, I don't suggest you use this in your bedroom. <laughs> it is resin, so be, be conscious of that fact. Um, you want a well-ventilated room, preferably a separate room, uh, so that you can maintain control of the fumes. Um, there's not too much. The VOCs aren't that dangerous from what I understand. They're discovering that the VOCs aren't a big issue. But still, why take a chance? You want to keep this away from pets. You want to keep this away from... Um, children who don't understand what they're looking at, etc. Uh, I understand the holes in the um, build tray are going away. The, the ones that ship will be solid, which is good. I get small artifacts on mine because of those holes. You can actually see that there. See those little dimples? I've nipped them off, but those dimples are those holes in the build tray. Um, I think they are passively heating this build chamber. It might be one of the reasons why they made this so thick. Because I notice whenever I pull this off, it's warm inside. And I notice that there is a fan. There. See that fan? I think that's drawing air from inside of here into here. And I think they're using that to passively heat. Because there's a lot of heat generated in here from the LCD and the LED panel in here. It's going to generate a lot of heat. So I think they're drawing that air into here 
to passively heat this chamber. And from what I understand, a warm chamber is good for resin prints. So that's interesting. If anybody has more information on that, let me know. Um, it does use a different mounting method for the vat than other ones. So I'm hoping they will make disposable vats like Eligo does. Because I like the idea of being able to swap out colors rapidly and easily. Um, this one, these bolts here, the knobs are threaded rods that go into the base so when you unscrew them you're actually unscrewing of essentially a bolt from the base and then the whole tray with the bolts attached comes out while the other ones you um i think they're slightly different so that will be interesting to see if we can get something compatible i have removed and reattached this dozens of times no issues in fact the only failed prints i've ever had were because i didn't clean out the vat or because i got a little too aggressive with my burn time settings trying to um bring it down as quickly as possible otherwise no failures yet i am very very impressed with that i'm glad they decided to use chitu box it's an excellent slicer for this i've used it to hollow out many of these prints you are going to discover that um, a lot of prints that you thought were manifold aren't so if anything looks even remotely funny run your print through netfab first your stl through netfab so for example i printed the spaceship starship Elon Musk's SpaceX Starship, and it had lots of individual bits inside that caused all kinds of problems when I attempted to hollow this. Ran it through NetFab, no problem, that works fine. I also hollowed this myself in Tinkercad. I cut it in half and hollowed out the inside myself in Tinkercad because there's a lot of fine detail components down here, and that just confused Chichu Box's hollow routine, so it was easier for me to just do it myself. But other ones, for example, this one. I had no problem hollowing it out using the Tito box slicer and putting drain holes in it. You can actually see one of the drain holes right there. See it right there, the one millimeter hole? Looks like a dead pixel right in the middle of your screen. There it goes. So I put those holes in there using the Tito box slicer. Nice metal case. This is all metal. Um, no issues, no complaints. They did a good job. This is as close to turnkey printing as you're going to get. You, you literally just fill the vat, hit go. Uh, the trade-off is there's finishing, lots and lots of finishing for parts. So when you're finished printing a part, these are all dry, so they're safe. I still have to nip off those supports, and then I have to um, cure these still fully because they're still slightly a teeny bit tacky. So I'm waiting for my UV light to come in because from what I understand, using sunlight to cure these actually makes them more brittle. You want to use as close to 405 nanometer light as you can to cure them, and they won't turn quite as brittle from what I understand. Now, let me show you some of the many, 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 many prints I've made. <laughs> I made the little turbine keychain, but it had some issues with that first layer issue. You can see how it flattens out that first layer. So I have to reprint that one. I tried to print my Flexi Rex, but he does not flex, so I have to work on that. It's fused. Um, I printed out and I tried painting a um, Lord of the Rings ring. Very nice details. A little hard to see, but good details. Trelon Musk. That printed beautifully. You can see the nubs again. Uh, if you ever watch RC Life on, he made a giant version of himself called Simon. Well, there you go. I printed a little Nano Simon. <laughs> if you guys know Naomi Wu, there's Naomi Wu. She also printed very nice. I actually printed her almost horizontally like this. And even the little stilettos on the heels came out fantastically. Really nice. And we have the Sorceress from Luby. Lewis Triggers, she made the Sorceress. Look, at even the fingers. Those itty bitty fingers. Incredible. Of course I did my cat bus. You gotta do the cat bus. Come on, focus. There you go. Even the itty bitty mice on top. Really impressed. The child, the little Yoda species child. I printed out some Stargate ornaments. I think that's Horus. Really, really fine details. Look how thin it is. 
Here's Filament One's filler runner. Their little Roadrunner critter. That came out really nice. Again, I put holes in it using G2 box. I needed to put a hole up here. I thought they were open in between. It wasn't, so I had to put a hole there. This is also very drillable. So here is my barrel driver. And I just, it, again, this is an issue where the model wasn't quite manifold before I figured that out. I should have run this through NetFab. So it printed a cylinder in the center instead of a hole in the center. And this part here is hollow. So I just drilled three holes and I was able to clean out the inside and make it look nice. How about a virus? Very cool. The, I showed you this already, the Velociraptor Claw from Jurassic Park. Spaceship One, or Starship, I think it's called Starship. So here's the two halves, I printed two at the same time. I glued them together and there is the ship. You can see the super fine details. There you go, the super fine line details. This model got decimated a little bit by bringing it into Tinkercad, but it still came out fantastic. All the details in the back there. Very cool. I finally, finally, finally got to print a QSN. A quasi, what do you call it? Um, um, I forget what it, what it is. But look at that ridiculous amount of detail. I broke the bottom because the um, supports were actually, I normally just break the supports off. You can see a whole bunch of supports from a model I'm about to show you. Normally I just grab the supports and I break them off and they come right off. But on the, in this case, the supports were thicker than the actual model. So the model broke. <laughs> so I just got rid of the rest of it and now I have a nice flat surface to mount to set it on table with. But that's my... Oh, um, quasi spin network. It's a quasi spin network. But that came out fantastic. Nice and clear, too. Not a whole lot of yellowing. Some of it has a little bit of yellowing, but not too much. Here's a uh, Jawa. Look, you see his eyes. They really, the details are just crazy. These are not blobs. That is actually detail in his staff. Incredible amount of detail. His blaster. Nice model. Really nice model, actually. I might try to make a really big one of those. Uh, Christmas ornament. Christmas ornament came out really nice. Oh, and this is all at 0.1 millimeter layer height. This is not even super high layer height. This is all 0.1. So most of these prints were under two hours. Yes, it's that fast. I'm using a... 8 to 10 second first layer, and I'm using 5 or 6 seconds for the intermediate layers. Walter White, we are right outside of Albuquerque, so it made sense to print his head micro size as well. The Walter White Crystal Skull, maybe? I think these are torture prints for resin printers, because this would be pretty damn hard to do with an FDM printer. But that came out really nice. I'm going to make these into Christmas ornaments. And this one is really nice. The fine detail in this, it's almost like it's almost like a fabric. See how I can move it? It's like a fabric. It's so fine. You can see there's three layers inside there. You have this layer, then you have the inner egg, and then you have the central egg. And they are all made of fine lines like this. That is a beautiful print. That's going to make a very pretty ornament. I want to modify this bottom here to not be a base that it stands on like this, so that I can hang that like an ornament I just think that would make a very pretty ornament mm. very very pleased with that and then my favorite one so far I need to re-slice it I think I need to pick a different orientation this is all the support that came off of it yeah a lot of support but I tried the PDWs didn't print sadly which really sucks but the Rosinante the details in this model are, look at that, ridiculous. I still got some supports to remove back here. Look at the details. Oh, there's something inside there. I'm not sure what that is. But it's a detail in the model. 
Oh man, the details. Blows me away how nicely this thing can print. Is it me or is that warped? That actually looks like it's curved. I wonder if the real one's like that. The antennas up here failed. And the PDWs. There's supposed to be two here and two here. All four PDWs failed. But otherwise, holy crap. Come on, focus, baby. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful details. All those panel lines, doors. Oh, I love this thing. That's a lot of resin right there. That's like 150 grams worth of resin plus the support. So that's an expensive print right there. But there you go. These are all of the prints that I've managed to make. Seriously? There you go. On the new Creality printer. I got some more ornaments. There's like seven different ornaments from Stargate. There you go. But so far, I am very, very pleased. I have no real complaints. It's They did a good job. Uh, for a beta machine, that's not bad. That's very nice. If you have any questions, ask below. I will do my best to answer. And in here, you can see I'm printing that really nice that crazy vase that we were printing before. So yeah, I'm printing a resin one of those. And this completely blocks the UV light too. You can normally see the purple light on the LCD screen and this completely blocked. I thought it wasn't working. I thought there was something wrong with the printer. And then I when I lifted it up, I saw the purple light and I realized that this is actually blocking almost all of it. You actually can't see the LCD. You can't see the emitter shine through the LCD through this panel. So it's a good panel. And that's it. Have any questions, ask down below. I will do my best to answer. Remember, this is beta hardware. So there will be changes and hopefully improvements between now and then.